I'm Dr. Judd Brewer, addiction psychiatrist and neuroscientist specializing in anxiety and habit change. Today, let's talk about worry and control and how these are related, why we feel like we need to be in control, how trying to gain control over things beyond our reach can cause problems, and of course, what we can do to balance all of this. I've been seeing a lot of people trying to maintain or exert control over their situations. My wife, who's a college professor, has seen colleagues who are spending a lot of time trying to create the perfect online experience for their students. A lot of people who have kids are now trying to create the perfect homeschool environment for their children. Others are stocking up on food and supplies, and even worrying can be an attempt to control our situation. So what's going on in our brains? When is this helpful and when not so much? And how can this behavior even increase anxiety? Let's start with the brain bits. I've mentioned reward-based learning in previous videos. It's the strongest learning system our brains have and has three main elements, a trigger, a behavior, and a reward. A fair amount of research has linked negative reinforcement to worry and feelings of control. I'll post a few references in the comments section below if you wanna read more. Basically, when triggered by external events or internal things like fear or anxiety, our minds start to worry in an attempt to control these unwanted experiences. Here, the reward for our brain is feeling like we're doing something. Another reward is that worrying distracts us from the worst feeling emotion of fear or anxiety. There are two pitfalls here. First, worry itself can become an unwanted experience. You probably know this yourself. Whether you worry a lot or are around people who worry a lot, it's not a pleasant mental space to hang out in. Second, when worry gets reinforced through negative reinforcement, it can easily become hard to control itself. I'm sure if you've worried about something and someone has told you to stop worrying, you've just added worrying about worrying to your list of things to worry about. You can't simply turn worry off. So just remember, if you're not careful, worry can become a habit. Another issue here is that worry can waste a lot of energy that could be put to good use if pointed in a different direction. I don't know about you, but I get exhausted when I worry too much. Similar to a car that's driving in the sand and starts to get stuck, worry is that habitual reaction of stepping on the gas, which only digs you in deeper, getting your car more stuck and using a precious fuel in the process. Worry can spill out into physical actions as well. On a governmental level, I'm sure you've seen examples of people running around trying to do something that makes us all see that they're doing something, even defying the scientists in the process. On a communal level, if you stock up on a year's worth of toilet paper because it makes you feel good that you're doing something, you're probably actually harming others who legitimately run out and need it. On a personal level, you might find yourself spending a lot of time tidying up a room or fussing over something trivial for work instead of spending time on more important tasks at hand. So seeing how worrying can waste energy, point you in the wrong direction, and even become a habit, what can you do? Here's a simple solution to help you work with worry so that you can point yourself back in the right direction and use your energy to move you down the road. Reinhold Niebuhr, an American theologian, wrote a prayer that a lot of my patients find really helpful to remember, the serenity prayer. I'll read it to you now. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. It really doesn't need a lot of explanation, but that won't stop me from linking this to brain science and giving you three simple steps to follow today. One, practice acceptance. When you're all wound up in worry, your thinking brain's offline and can't think. At these times, you go into survival mode and either slip back to old habits or follow the herd and do what everyone else is doing. If you're religious, you can practice acceptance by doing a short prayer and reminding yourself that this is in God's hands. If you're not religious, try some of the mindfulness practices I've been suggesting, such as mindful breathing or feeling your feet. These help you calm down so your thinking brain can come back online. Number two, when your thinking brain is back online, if you are worrying, you can ask yourself, is this actually helping me right now or just getting me more wound up? If you're about to do something, think about what you are about to do and ask yourself, is this the best path forward? Is this really helping right now or am I doing this because it feels better to be doing something rather than nothing? Number three, find courage to change the things you can change. 
okay, for all you doers and fixers out there, the next thing I'm going to say is going to be really hard to hear. So take a deep breath and see if you can accept what I'm about to say. Sometimes being is more important than doing. By this, I mean take a moment to pause and let that urge to do something pass. Remember, just doing something doesn't mean you're doing something helpful. You might just be wasting energy and possibly making things worse in the process. If you really want to do something, here's something you can do that's always productive. Map out any habit loops you have around doing or fixing. First, identify what triggered the doing behavior. Was it fear or anxiety or something else? Second, identify your doing or fixing behavior. And third, map out the results of the behavior. Just like I mentioned in step two, you can ask yourself, does worrying get me anything besides more anxiety and worry? Did this behavior help in the past? Is it likely to help now? My lab has found that the Olympians of worry, people with generalized anxiety disorder, can effectively use app-based mindfulness training to map out their worry habit loops, step out of them so that they don't perpetuate worry as a habit, and through this process, significantly reduce worry and anxiety. The more you can identify and let go of worry habit loops and well-intentioned but often misguided actions, the more this frees you up to do things that are not only within your control, but also helpful for you and those around you. I'll end with a page from the book that my wife and I are reading together before we go to sleep. It's called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. I think everyone is just trying to get home, said the mole. Yes, everyone is just trying to get to their home, a place where we don't have to worry so much about what's going to happen. So practice these tips today and see if you are feeling that urge to do something. Step back and make sure that you're pointed in the right direction before you spend a lot of energy on it. And see if mapping out any worry habit loops helps you step out of them and into being with your mind and yourself instead. And do do something helpful, stay home. We all need to stay home to keep this from spreading. Onward, together. See you tomorrow. If there are topics you'd like me to cover, post them in the comments section below or tag me on Twitter at Judd Brewer. Subscribe to this channel to get updated when I post new videos, and please share this video with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you.